Good day everyone! Magandang araw sa lahat! Buen dia todos! We are your fellow hospitality and tourism students from Palawan State University El Nido Campus, Grove 4. We are going to share our knowledge regarding the readings in Philippine history with the topic KKK or known as Kataas-taasang Kagalanggalangang Katipunan ng Mga Anak ng Bayan and Kartilya ng Katipunan. Before we begin, let me introduce you the most prominent person in this topic. First, we have Utak ng Katipunan. Do you know this person? He is Emilio Jacinto, born in Tronzo, Tondo, Manila, December 15, 1875. His father died after he was born and adopted by his uncle, Don Jose Dizon. He also known as Pinky Ann and Di Masilao, obtained the degree of Bachelor of Arts degree in Colegio de San Juan de Litran, studied law in USD or known as University of Santo Tomas, remained loyal to Bonifacio even after his death, died April 16, 1899. Second, we have Andres Bonifacio, a man ng Katipunan, born in Tondo, November 30, 1863. His parents died when he was 14 years old, then supported his siblings, start schooling at Guillermo Osmeña. He is also known as Supremo, anak ng bayan, agapito, bagong bayan. He wrote Pag-ibig sa Tinubuang Bayan. He is also educated himself by extensive reading of books and learning Spanish by himself. His first wife was Monica, and the second wife was Gregoria de Jesus. These are the leaders of the Katipunan. Number 1, Judato Arellano as Supremo. 2, Ladislao Diwa as Piscal. 3, Chudora Plata as Secretary. 4, Valentin Diaz as Treasurer. 5, Andres Bonifacio as Controller. As we can see from the beginning, Bonifacio first became controller and was one of the chief Katipunan officers, although he did not become its president supremo, supreme president until 1895. He was the third head of the Katipunan after Judato Arellano and Roman Basa. Jose Rizal and the Katipunan Rizal's writing, No Limi Tangere and El Palibosterismo inspired Bonifacio into action. Rizal's name was used as a password among the society's highest-ranking members, who were called Bayani. Bonifacio respected Rizal's intelligence and talents that in June 1896, he sent Dr. Pio Valenzuela to the Pitan to seek Rizal's advice in the Flan Revolution. Founding of the Katipunan Katipunan founded on the night of July 7, 1892, as Caraga Street, Claro, and Recto Street, Katastaasang Kagalanggalang Katipunan ng Mga Anak ng Bayan, Supreme and Most Honorable Society of the Children of the Nation, Suprema y Venerable Asociación de los Hijos del Pueblo, Founder Andres Bonifacio with the aid of his friends, Chedora Plata, Ladislao Diwa, Judato Arellano, and Valentin Diaz. KKK Objectives Political, Moral, Civic Political Separation from Spain The political goal was to completely separate the Philippines from Spain after declaring the country's independence. Moral, good manners and good hygiene. The moral goal was to teach the Filipinos good manners, cleanliness, hygiene, fine morals, and how to guard themselves against religious fanaticism. Civic Self-help and self-defense of the poor and the oppressed. Katastaasang Sanggunian or Supreme Council for the whole country consisted of a president, a fiscal, a secretary, a treasurer, and a controller. Next, we have Sangguniang Bayan, Provincial Council for every province. Next, we have Sangguniang Balangay or Municipal Council for every town. Next, we have Sangguniang Hukom or Judicial Council. It decided cases involving treachery among the members and quarrels between them. So this is the example of the organization, Katastasang Sanggunian, Sangguniang Bayan, and Sangguniang Balangay. Secret Initiation of the Katipunan A candidate for membership was first blindfolded and entered a secret room. In the room, there was a table with a lamp, a skull, and a bolo. 
The blindfold was removed from his eyes. He was given a test on the history of the Philippines to show that he knew the Spaniard had oppressed the Filipinos. He had to pass other tests on his patriotism, courage, and sincerity. Katipunan Membership Originally, the KKK recruited new members by means of triangle system, and original members would recruit two new members who did not know each other. Example, Bonifacio formed the first triangle with Diwa and Plata. They also agreed that they would pay a membership fee amounting to one real fuerte, 25 centavos, and a monthly due of major real, 12 centavos. Membership in the Katipunan First grade, Katipon, or Associate. They were black mass. Their password was Anak ng Bayan or Sons of the People. Second grade, Kawal, Soldier. They were Green Mass. Their password was Gomborza. Third grade, Bayani or Patriot. They were Red Mass. Their password was Rizal. Katipunan Flags We have the KKK, the first flag of the Katipunan. The next KKK, this stands for Katastaasang Kagalang-Galangang Katipunan ng Mga Anak ng Bayan. And we have also the flag of the Magdiwang Faction. The other side, we have the red color symbolize the blood of the members of the Katipunan who signed their names in blood to join. The next flag was flag of the Magdalo Faction. And the last flag, the first official flag of the Philippines, 1897. The first image are the Katipuneros, and the other image is the Katipunan cell, an ink pad made of stone found in the raid of the printing press where the Kalayaan was printed. This is the letter from Andres Benifacio to Emilio Jacinto, an extremely rare and historically important letter from Andres Bonifacio to Emilio Jacinto, dated April 16, 1897 from Nike in Cavite. In Andres Bonifacio's own handwriting on his official stationery with the letterhead Andres Bonifacio may pag-asa. Bonifacio's battle name P. ng Ki Kapulungan, Pangulo ng Katastaasang Kapulungan, or President of the Supreme Council, stamped with Bonifacio's seal, a K in ancient Tagalog script with rays surrounding it, around with the words are written, Haring Bayang Katagalugan, Katastaasang Kapulungan, the Sovereign Nation of Ta Tagala Supreme Council. Officers' first election during August 1892. Judato Aureliana is the president. Jose Rizal is the honorary president. Andres Bonifacio is the controller and auditor. Ladislao Diwa is the fiscal. Chodoro Plata is the secretary. Valentin Diaz is the treasurer. And the uh, officers in second election during February 1893, Roman Baza is the president. Andres Bonifacio is the controller and auditor. Andres Bonifacio also is a fiscal. Jose Toriano Santiago is the secretary. Besento Molina is the treasurer. And the third election, during December 1895, Andres Bonifacio is the supremo. Emilio Asinto is the secretary of state. Chodoro Plata is the secretary of war. Brasillo Pantas is the secretary of justice. Aguedo del Rosario is the Secretary of Interior. Enrique Pacheco is the Secretary of Finance. Every member of the Katipunan adopted a symbolic name. Andres Bonifacio, May Pag-asa. Emilio Asinto, Pinkian. Artemio Ricarte, Vabora. Emilio Aguinaldo, Magdalo. Women also joined the Katipunan to be admitted in the women's section. One had to be a wife, daughter, or sister of the Katipunero to ensure the secrecy of the movement. When a secret meeting was being held, the female Katipuneros pretended it was a party by singing songs and dancing. Qualifications for female members Wife of a Katipunero, daughter of a Katipunero, sister of a Katipunero, any close relative of a Katipunero. These are the prominent Katipuneras, Gregoria de Jesus, wife of Bonifacio, and was called La Cambini of the Katipunan. These are the two sisters of Rizal, Josepa Rizal and Trinidad Rizal. 
Melchora Ramos E. Aquino, known as Tandang Sora, January 6, 1812, March 2, 1919, the mother of the Katipunan. She feed the Katiponeros and Nars, the wounded patriots. Later, she was arrested by the Spanish authorities and was exiled in Marianas. Literature of the Katipunan Emilio Jacinto, youngest and greatest writer of the Katipunan. His pen name was Dimas Ilaw. He wrote the following A la Patria, his poetical masterpiece, Liwanag at Dilim, a series of essay on human rights, liberty, equality of men, labor, and love of country. Cartilia ng Katipunan contains the teachings of the KKK. Hello everyone! Today, I will be sharing with you our knowledge regarding the Kartilya ng Katipunan. Before we begin, we must first understand what is the Kartilya ng Katipunan. The Kartilya ng Katipunan serve as the guide of the Katipunan, which lead out the group roles and principles. Recognizing the need of a premier in indoctrinating society's member in its principles, Jacinto constructed one that he termed Cartilia, a word taken from the Spanish Cartilia, which at the time of Spanish colonialism meant a premier for grade school children. Let's move on to the background of the author. Historian regard Emilio Jacinto as the prince of the Katipunan. Artemio Ricarte called him the Moises of the Filipino people while Epifanio de los Santos considered him the soul of the revolution and the eyes of the Katipunan. Emilio Asinto was born in Troso, Manila on December 15, 1875. He used the pin names Pinkian, Dimasilaw, and Kailiong. He joined the Katipunan in 1894 and was the youngest member at 19 years old. He was the fiscal, secretary, editor, and later, General of the Katipunan. He also became the director of the printing shop and library of the Katipunan. He was also the editor of the newspaper Kalayaan. He died of malaria on April 16, 1899 at 23 years old. Historical Background of the Cartilia Andres Punipasio had long desired a formalized document outlining each Katipunan member's duties and responsibilities. Emilio Asinto was also composing a document at the same time as Bonifacio. When Bonifacio was preparing to consult Asinto for feedback on his draft, the latter had already given it to the Supremo. After seeing Emilio Asinto's draft of the Cartilia ng Katipunan, Bonifacio was impressed with Asinto's writing style and decided to use the Cartilia as a guidebook for the Katipunan's rules and regulations. Teachings of the Katipunan The Katipunan Code of Conduct by Emilio Asinto The Katipunan Codes of Conduct can be connected to the Cartilia. It contains 14 rules that instruct how a Katipuneros should behave and which specific values should be upheld. The Cartilia's rules can be divided into two categories. The first group contains the rules that will help the members become upright individuals, while the second group has the rules that will guide how they treat their fellow men. First Code of Conduct The life that is not consecrated to a lofty and reasonable purpose is a tree without a shade if not a poisonous weed. The first code of conduct simply states that we must live a life with a purpose. We need to know how to develop objectives and find meaning in our life because if we don't, we will find ourselves in unfavorable situation. We should have clear goal in mind for how we might develop ourselves and live better lives. The second code of conduct says to do good for personal gain and not for its own sake is not virtue. People must not be greedy. 
according to the second code of conduct. We must undertake good things not for the sake of receiving a claim, but to demonstrate them with our whole hearts, because a deed done solely for the sake of re own is unworthy of the term good. You will feel better if you have done something decent, and if you done it for self-interest, you will never get a positive result. According to the third code of conduct, it is rational to be charitable and love one's fellow creature, and to adjust one's conduct, act, and words to what is in itself reasonable. It clearly indicates the true meaning of generosity. Generosity is characterized by the service and love one extends to one's fellow man without expecting anything in return. Having a nice heart will distinguish you, especially if you use it to help others and accomplish something great. It will return to you with goodwill once you've done something kind with all your hearts and love your peers. Fourth God of Conduct Whether our skin be black or white, we are all born equal. Superiority in knowledge, wealth, and beauty are to be understood, but not superiority by nature. The fourth rule emphasizes equality. We are all born equal, regardless of our race, social status, or educational background. Although our society has separated us into groups, we must all recognize that no one is superior to anyone else. Everyone should have the same experience with equality, because everyone has equal rights. The Fifth Code of Conduct The honorable man prepares honors to personal gain. The scoundrel gain to honor. A decent man must recognize the valuing oneself. Sometimes entails choosing honor over personal gain. True honor entails adhering to a high moral code of conduct. The sixth code of conduct to the honorable man, his word is sacred. The sixth rule states that we must be a man with our own words. Whatever else is mentioned must be carried out. We must follow through on our promises because we can never undo what we have spoken. Seven Code of Conduct Do not waste your time. Wealth can be recovered, but not time lost. This Code of Conduct teaches us to value time because it is something we can never get back. Everybody should be aware of the significance of time. We spend most of our time worrying about various issues. We may come to regret the things we didn't get done, but at least we use our time well, for time is cold. The Eighth Code of Conduct Defend the priest and fight the oppressor before the law or in the field. We may not have the same strength. Yet, we can still support each other. We must choose to fight for what is right. We must fight for the vulnerable who need support and comfort, as well as those who mistreat by others. 9. Code of Conduct The prudent man is sparing in words and faithful in keeping secrets. This emphasizes the significance of confidentiality and trust. A smart guy considers what he says and remembers what needs to be remembered. Learn to keep very important information private. The tenth code of conduct says, On the thorny path of life, man is the guide of woman and the children. And if the guide leads to precipice, those whom he guides will also go there. The tenth rule of code of conduct entails us that a true man shows his family the way to righteousness by being virtuous himself.
As the leaders of the household or any organizations, be a good leader who leads your followers along the right path and molds them into good people. 11. Code of Conduct says, Thou must not look upon woman as a mere plaything, but as faithful companion who will share with the penalties of life. Her physical weakness will increase thee, interest in her, and she will remind her of the mother who bore thee and reared thee. Women are the focus of this principle, that every woman is deserving of respect, and that no male should regard her as an item or a relic of the past. A man who does not respect a woman, as they usually say, does not respect his mother, who gave him birth. Women deserve to be treated with dignity and care. 12. Code of Conduct What thou does not desire done unto the wife, children, brothers, and sisters, that do not undo the wife, children, brothers, and sisters of the neighbor. Any action taken by a man is significant, that each action has its own set of consequences. If we don't want other people to do awful things to us, we should not do nasty things to them. The 13th Code of Conduct says, Man is not worth more because he is a king, because his nose is aquiline and his color white, not because he is a priest, a servant of God, nor because of a high prerogative that he enjoys upon earth, but he is worth most, who is a man of proven and real value, who does good, keeps his words, is worthy and honest, he who does not oppress nor consent to being oppressed, he who loves and cherishes his fatherland, though he be born in the wilderness and know no tongue but his own. The thirteenth principle revolves around having decent character and morals. A man's life is not defined by his social rank or the position he obtains. Instead, it's in his heart and his attachment to his country. The fourteenth code of conduct says, When these rules of conduct shall be known to all, the long-run sun of liberty shall rise brilliant over this most unhappy portion of the globe, and its rays shall diffuse everlasting joy among the confederated brethren of the same race. The lives of those who have gone before, the fatigues and the well-fed suffering will remain. If he who desires to enter the Katipunan has informed himself of all this, and believes he will be able to perform what will be his duty. He may fill out the application for admission. The final code of conduct demonstrates Emilio Aguinaldo's desire to mold every Katipuneros into a better person. All of the conduct must be followed, and every member must be able to recognize of all the Cartilia's important guidelines. Aside from the Spaniards' mistreatment of Filipinos, the following elements influence the formation of the Katipunan and the Cartilia. The Age of Enlightenment gave way to liberalism and classicism and in the 20th century modernism. In this period, secret societies like the Freemasons were established. Copy houses, newspapers, and literary salons flourish as new places for ideas to circulate and transfer. Second was the Prince Revolution, was a period of social and political upheaval in France. It became the focal point for the development of all modern political ideologies. This led to the spread of radicalism, liberalism, and nationalism, which greatly influenced the illustrados in the Philippines and in Europe. The third was the masonry, was introduced to the Philippines in 1856. The true roots of the Philippine masonry sprouted in 1889, when Graciano Lopez Haina organized the Logia Revolution in Barcelona. True Filipino students studying in the Spain must spread in Philippine circles. 
And the part was the propaganda movement was a series of events which lead to the establishment of the Katipunan and stugging of an armed rebellion against the Spanish colonial administration. This movement helped Andres Benifacio and other nationalists to realize that a peaceful way of asking for reform was not enough. And the fifth was, the La Lega Filipina was established by Jose Rizal when he decided to return to the Philippines to continue to call for reforms through legal means. La Lega split into two factions, the Katipunan lead by Andres Bonifacio and the Cuerpo de Compromisarios lead by Numeriano Adriano. This will be the end of our topic. Thank you for watching.